here's a set of data that I'm supposed to create a trigonometric model for. Um, there's lots of ways of doing this, but I'm going to actually plot the data in my calculator so I can see highs and lows and if there's any horizontal or vertical shifts and stuff like that. So to do this, I go to my calculator and I go to my stat and hit edit. And in my first column, I'm going to put the numbers 1 through 6. And in the second column, I'm going to put the numbers 1, minus 3, minus 7, in other words, a second row. So this is going to be my X list and my Y list. Now in order to plot the data, I have to go to Stat Plot, hit number 1, and make sure it's turned on. And I'm going to do the scatter plot, which is the highlight this first guy. Make sure this is List 1 and List 2, and it doesn't really matter what mark you put on there. Now, as uh, far as my window is concerned, it looks like my X values go from 0 to 6. Hold on. Looks like my X values go from 0 to 6, and my Y values, um, the highest it goes is 1, so I'm going to have this at Y max at 2, and the lowest is in minus 7, so I have it at minus 8. Um, that way I get to see everything more vertically. I tend to add extra on the Y max and Y min. And make sure that this is all cleared out here. And let's go and graph the data. Okay. Now this actually looks like a cosine graph up to here, but it's not one period or two periods. It looks like it's there's one period and then there's a half a period. So it looks like um, I'm getting 1.5 periods over the interval from 1 to 6. And I go, so to actually determine the period, I notice I go from a high point to a, another high point over four units. So it looks like that's what my period is. Well, regardless of that, when I do these kinds of problems, I have a tendency to do it in a very particular order. I think about what the amplitude is going to be. I think about what the midline is going to be, what the period is going to be, and if there's going to be any type of horizontal shift. All, that's all the information I need from the data. Now, right now, I'm going to tell you the horizontal shift, there is none, because the regular cosine graph starts at its high point on the vertical axis, and so does this graph. So I'm going to say that there is no horizontal shift, or the horizontal shift is zero, whatever you prefer. Now, my amplitude is the distance, half of the distance between the high and the low point. So if I think about what my high point is, my high point is 1, my low point is minus 7. So if I take the total distance between the high and low point, that's going to be 1 minus minus 7, which is 8. And the amplitude is going to be half of that, which is 4. Now, my midline occurs halfway between the high and low point. So that means four units, so my amplitude's four, four units down from the high or four units up from the low is where my midpoint's going to be. So my low point is minus seven. I'm going to add four to that. So my midline looks like it's at um, y, see so what is minus seven plus four is a negative three. So my midline occurs at y equal negative three. My period because I started at a high point and ended at high point over four units is going to be four. So the basic structure of the model that I'm going to be building is going to be y equals a cosine bx plus d. Notice there's no c value lurking in there because my horizontal shift is zero. Based on this information above, I can say my amplitude is going to be positive four. Because the data starts at the high point and goes downward, that means my A value for this graph is going to have to be positive. Remember, negative A just turns it over the midline, but we don't want to do that right here. A is 4. B is equal to 2 pi over the period. And that simplifies to pi over 2. And uh, then D is where the midline is, so that's minus 3. So my model turns out to be y equals 4 cosine pi over 2x minus 3. Now let's see if that actually uh, fits the data. So here's my plot. 
I'm going to go to my y equals and type in 4 cosine pi divided by 2 times x minus 3. Let's see if you can see that there. Okay. Now let's uh, graph it. See if it goes through our data. Look at that. That's always very uh, wonderful when you see the graph go exactly through the data. So if you just kind of structure it, so you find, do the same things every time when you have a set of data, amplitude, midline, period, and then you find your A, B, and D, or C, if necessary, in the same way.